I'm Professor Geller of the Computing Center. Before you can effectively use the computer, you must be able to communicate with it. Here is one way, a punched card. This particular card represents part of a program which will enable the computer to solve a problem, such as the numerical solution of this system of equations. The computer will first read the program from a deck of such cards and then solve the problem. Since the computer will read the information encoded by these punched holes, you can see the importance of the familiar warning, do not spindle, fold, or mutilate. In other words, any unintentional holes would change the information on the card. This card was prepared on this machine, the IBM 29 card punch. The purpose of our presentation is to show you how to prepare punched cards by using this machine. You will begin, of course, with an unpunched card. We'll describe the type you see here and which you will normally use at the university. There are many other kinds of cards. Some have different colors, different printing, different corner cuts, etc. It's important to remember, however, that nothing affects the information on the card except the holes you punch. For the basic operation of the card punch, you should know, first of all, that we punch one character in each column and that the card has 80 vertical columns. On most cards, the column number is printed in each column near the top of the card and along the bottom. Also, as you will see later on, there is an indicator on the IBM card punch itself which shows you in which of these 80 columns you are punching. Secondly, you should know the terms which are used to describe the top and bottom edges of the card since the card punch and other pieces of equipment require that these edges be positioned in a certain way. The top edge is called the 12 edge and the bottom, the nine edge. There is a reason for these particular terms, but for the moment, just remember that the top of the card is called the 12 edge and the bottom, the nine edge. Now let's turn to the machine which prepares these cards for the computer. Karen Diamond will assist us by operating the card punch. First, let's follow the route of the cards through the machine. The blank cards start in the feed hopper and are then moved into position for punching. The holes are punched at this point, the punching station. The card column indicator shows which of the 80 vertical columns is being punched. The card then moves to the reading station from which information may be copied to the following card. From the reading station, it goes to the stacker where the cards end up in the order in which they've been punched. The basic operation of the machine is controlled from this keyboard. Now let's go through the step-by-step -step procedure for operating the machine. We will not describe every feature, just those you need to know for its basic operation. Also, because you might wish to take notes, we will go through the procedure twice and number each step. First, turn the card punch on with the switch on the front panel underneath the desktop. Normally, you will find the card punch turned on, and you should leave it that way when you finish. Second, look at this window in the center of the machine. 
to see if the small star wheels are lifted off the surface of the cylinder. If they are not, push the right side of this switch down to raise the wheels. Except for the card column indicator at the bottom of the cylinder, this mechanism will not be used in the basic operation of the card punch, and the wheels should always be raised. Third, make sure that all of the keyboard switches are in the up position, except the one at the far right labeled clear. You are now ready to place your deck into the feed hopper. The cards should first be joggled into a smooth deck to ensure proper alignment and feeding. Then, push the pressure plate back until it clicks and stays back, and place the cards in the hopper with the nine edge, that is the bottom edge, down, and with the front of the cards toward you. Release the pressure plate until it fits snugly behind the cards. Fifth, push the feed key twice. It is located in the second row from the top of the keyboard and is labeled Feed. Pushing this key twice will place one card in the punching station and a second card just behind it. After this point, the cards will feed automatically. You are now ready to punch your deck of cards. Before we actually punch anything, let's take a close look at the keyboard, but only at those keys which you will use for the basic operation of the machine. Two features of the keyboard are identical to those of a conventional typewriter. They are the space bar, which moves the card along one column at a time, and the arrangement of the alphabetic characters, which are positioned in the standard typewriter format. Digits, punctuation marks, and all other characters are in a position different from that of a typewriter. A feature worth noting is that the digits are arranged as on an ordinary adding machine. Unlike the typewriter, the keyboard has two independent shift keys. The alphabetic, marked alpha, is here in the lower right-hand corner. Actually, you will never have to use the alphabetic shift key. But the numeric shift key here in the lower left-hand corner must be held down each time you want to punch a symbol on the upper half of a key. For example, suppose you want to punch IBM 29 card punch. You would punch the letters I, B, and M, then space, then hold down the numeric shift key while punching the 2 and the 9, then release the numeric shift key and punch the remaining alphabetic characters and spaces. While the card is in the punching station, you will not be able to see the column which you are punching. You can read the printed characters at the top of each column you have punched as soon as they are more than two columns beyond the punching station. Here Karen is spacing out a few columns to read what she has punched. Notice that even though no shift key is used for alphabetic characters, they always print as capitals. In checking the columns you have punched, remember that the computer will read only the holes you have punched, not the printed characters at the top of the column. Don't make the mistake which was once made by a person who punched the wrong character in a column and then tried to correct it by erasing the printing, writing in the proper character at the top of the column. Suppose we now wish to add the word machine right after the word punch. We see on the card that the letter H is in column 17. So the word machine should start in column 19. 
You always know which column is at the punching station by looking through this window at the card column indicator. We are now at column 35. Backspacing is accomplished by this button at the center of the machine. The card will continue to move backwards as long as the button is held down. In this case, we watch the card column indicator until we have backspaced to column 19. Now we can punch the word machine. Remember also that you can't correct a mistake by backspacing it to a column and punching the correct character over the incorrect one. This will only make two sets of holes in the same column, thus creating a new combination of holes which is meaningless. In a moment, we'll show you the right way to make corrections. After you have completed the punching of a card, you will push the release key, labeled REL, on the top row of the keyboard. This will move the next card into position for punching. It will also move the card which has just been punched to the reading station. Incidentally, this whole process happens automatically if you punch something in column 80, the last column on the card. The duplicate key, labeled DUP, can save you time when the same information must be duplicated on a number of cards or when you have to make corrections. Here's how we use it. A card moves through the reading station in column by column synchronization with the card in the punching station. When the duplicate key is pressed, the holes in the first card will be copied column for column onto the second card. This copying will continue for as long as the duplicate key is held down. Suppose we want the copy of the card we punched earlier. We hold the duplicate key down until all of the holes are copied. Notice how the movement of the two cards is synchronized. The release key then brings a new card into position. Now suppose we want a card that says IBM 29 Card Punch Service instead of Card Punch Machine. We would duplicate the first 18 columns. Then punch the word service beginning in column 19. You can see how this feature can help you when you make a wrong punch. Let's assume that you made a mistake in column 22 of the card now in the punching station. When you discover the mistake, push the release key to move the incorrect card to the reading station and the new card into the punching station. Duplicate the first 21 columns. Then continue punching the correct information from column 22 on. After a card is passed through the reading station, it normally goes into the card stacker, but it's a good idea to remove an incorrect card from your deck as it leaves the reading station on its way to the stacker. When you have completed your punching, lift the toggle switch marked clear here on the face of the keyboard. This will move the cards in the track through to the stacker without feeding new cards from the hopper, thus clearing the track. The clear switch returns to the down position as soon as you let go. Remove your completed cards from the stacker and the remaining blank cards from the feed hopper. Now let's review the basic operation of the card punch. First, turn the machine on.
Second, make sure the wheels are lifted off the surface of the cylinder. Next, move all of the switches on the face of the keyboard to the up position except the clear switch. Then joggle the deck, place the cards in the feed hopper by pushing the pressure plate all the way back, put the cards in the hopper with the nine edge down and the front of the cards facing you, and then move the pressure plate forward snugly behind the cards. Fifth, push the feed key twice to move the first card into the punching station and the second into position behind the first. After this, cards will feed and move through the machine automatically. You are now ready to start punching. Remember, characters on the upper half of the keys are punched with the numeric shift key down. The card column indicator shows you in which column you're punching. Backspacing is controlled by this button in the center of the machine. After a card is punched, the release key is used to move the next card into position. The card just punched moves into position at the reading station where information may be read and copied onto the following card in the punching station by means of the duplicate key. When punching is completed, use the clear switch. Finally, remove your punched cards from the stacker and your remaining blank cards from the feed hopper. Always put a rubber band around a, pun de a punch deck of cards to keep them in the proper order. After you have finished punching a deck of cards, it should be carefully checked for mistakes. The best way to find mistakes is to read a printer listing of the deck. To have this listing produced for you, get a Model 20 control card from the Computing Center key punch room. Punch the word list on it, starting in column two. Notice that column one already has some punches in it. Put it in front of your deck and hand it in at the window at the computing center. We have shown you the basic operation of the IBM 29 card punch. If you wish to review the material you have seen, you may obtain a script of this presentation in the counseling room at the computing center. SPN 3417.